the first experiment of the redox reactions is in an iodine thiosulfate one is actually an experiment used to work out the concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Now we need to work out the sodium thiosulfate concentration as we're going to use this to work out the concentration of hypochloride in blue. So we always need to know the concentration of one of the reagents. So in this we use a standard solution of iodine solution. Now the problem with iodine, which is I2, is that it's non-polar. That is van der Waals forces, the weakest of the intermolecular forces. And because it's non-polar, it's insoluble in water. And remember, light dissolves like so polar dissolves in polar, non-polar dissolves in non-polar. Now one of the criteria of a primary standard is a water-soluble substance, so this is not a wa water-soluble substance. Um, so it's not technically iodine we use, we make up an iodine solution. Now to make up this iodine solution in the conical flask we use a substance known as potassium iodate, KiO3 you might see it written as, excess potassium iodide, use your acid here, which is dilute sulfuric acid, and then you've got your iodine solution being produced. So you've got your I2 solution being produced, and you know about your color of I2 is that it's your red brown color um, at the start. So that's why the initial color is red brown because you're producing your iodine. Now, an important question in both of these, this and the bleach experiment, is why do you add excess Ki? Or how do you keep iodine in solution? What it means is, how do you keep your iodine in solution is that iodine is non-polar. How does it stay dissolved in water? And the reason that is, your A2 here reacts with your excess potassium iodide, which is represented by I minus. So your A2 reacts with your excess Ki, and it sets up a weak equilibrium reaction to form triiodide ions. Now triiodide reacts the exact same as I2, same chemical properties, um, same chemical properties, but it's polar. It has a charge on it, and since it's polar, it's soluble in water. So it's miscable with it. And that's how we'll start. We'll look at a 2015 question here. And the leavings are higher level. And the first part here is not as difficult enough, but you should always get it. Explain how iodine, which is I2, a non-polar substance, <coughs> as we mentioned down here, is brought into the aqueous solution. So how is your iodine, um, how does it stay in solution? So I would write down there, iodine reacts with excess potassium iodide. And it's important you know the difference in iodide and iodate. Iodate, IO3 minus, Iodide, Ki, or I minus. Iodine reacts with excess potassium iodide, forming polar triiodide. Tri these as three. Triiodide ions. And stick down your equation there. I2 plus I minus. And if you know more, fire it in. This is polar. And therefore, it's soluble in water. And they ask, yeah, no, well, that's it. And brought into aqueous solution. The next thing here, the iodine solution was made into a two or 500 volumetric flask, described the procedure for measuring so the thing there was measuring the solution into a conical flask. So how do you get it from the volumetric flask to the conical flask? So the thing they're looking for there, pour your iodine solution into a beaker, and then you've got to get it in your pipette, because you never pipette out of a volumetric flask. Rinse your pipette with deionized water, and then with the solution that it's going to contain. And the solution that it's going to contain here is your iodine solution. Uh, using a pipette filler, bring your iodine solution until the bottom of the meniscus rests on the calibration mark, release into your conical flask, allow it to flow under gravity, and don't blow out the last drop at the, at the bottom, sorry.
name a suitable indicator, starch indicator. What stage is at it? When we get a pale straw yellow and state the color change at the end, blue, black, colorless. So your iodine solution here reacts with your sodium thiosulfate. Once it goes pale straw yellow, the reaction is nearly over. So we add in starch, which is very hard to see a difference between this pale straw yellow and colorless. If there's any iodine there, it's not a quantitative, quantitative measurement. It doesn't tell you how much iodine there is. If there's any iodine there, it goes blue black. So you add in your starch, goes blue black, and then you titrate to colorless. So it mightn't take too many extra drops. Uh, and now we're into the calculation. So in this one, first principle speed up. The first thing that they've given you here is that there was 6.35 grams of iodine in 500 centimeters cubed. Difficult calculation, you could do it heaps of different ways at the start. Calculate the number of moles in 25 centimeters cubed portions. So you could work out the grams in 25 and then change it to moles. Some people might want to bring this to molarity. Either way, there's multiple different ways. So say we work out the molarity. Um, so we have 6.35 grams. It's nearly going backwards, but sure, fuck it. In 500, how do you say in? Put it over and then times that by a thousand. So I'm trying to get the grams in a liter. You could just multiply it by two and you get 12.7 grams. Grams per liter. And they've asked for the number of moles in 25 centimeters cubed portions. I'll change this to moles now. So I2, we've got grams to go back to moles, divide by the relative molecular mass. I2 is 2 by 127, the mass number, 254. That looks nice, but it's some version of a half. 0 0.05 that's moles per liter or 0 0.05 m and they've asked for the number of moles in 25 centimeters cubed portions so 0 0.05 once you see that big m it means the number of moles in a liter and then a thousand and then times that by 25 0 0.00 one, two, five moles, 25 centimeters cubed. The other way, which you could have done at the start, it was 6.35 grams in 500, just to work it out in 25, 6.35 in 500, times that by 25, so that's the number of grams in 25 centimeters cubed. Now to go back to moles, divided by the relative molecular mass, and you get the same answer. So, a slightly different way, Perfect. Probably makes more sense nearly. Uh, the second one, the number of moles of your sodium thiosulfate required to reduce this quantity of iodine. If you like, you can have your retitration conclusion or here, this is our number of moles of iodine. Now look at your ratio. Your ratio here, one is the two. So we know there's 0 0.00125 moles of iodine. To work out the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate doubly. What's that? 25, so 0 0.0025 moles. Just throw it in your calculator. And this is the important bit. How much sodium thiosulfate did we use? In the question, this will be the octet figure. or 17.85 see it actually in the part below so they're just looking for that answer but you had five centimeters cubed sodium thiosulfate and your part three the concentration of sodium thiosulfate in moles per liter 17.85 of which were required so there give me the volume so this here answer is perfect the only reason i put this on it just keeps me right so how do you say this thing again? In, so 0 0.0025 in 17.85 to work out its molarity times it by a thousand. Zero point one four. If 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so doing fire so good. And then the concentration in grams per litre of its crystal, so they use a pentahydrate, pentahydrate um, water, hydrated substance. So we've got the number of moles per litre. Now to go to grams per litre, you multiply by the relative molecular mass of, look at the formula they give you, Na2S2O3 5H2O. I've got to work out the relative molecular mass of this. So two sodiums, two sulfurs, uh, three oxygens, and five waters. And you add up all those, eight, 10, eight, 10, 248. So to go for moles, when you're leaving moles, you multiply by the relative molecular mass. And you get 34.73 grams per liter. And the last bit as well, explain why the use of distilled water instead of the ionized water would be likely to ensure a more accurate result. So deionized, as the name suggests, only as ions removed. Deionized process of removing ions. So deionized water only as ions removed. It still contains dissolved substances.